Right. Let's spend some time talking about uh, security for a little bit. So mm -hmm. um, the, the first is uh, any time that you start to have machines gathering lots of data, uh, I think people are just worried about like, hey, where's the data get stored? How do you make sure it's secure? Uh, how does that get treated? Who does it get shared with, et cetera? How do you think about um, some of the best practices there and, and like at what level of um, may, maybe awareness should people have? Uh, given these certain devices like, you know, the Alexas in their homes, Google Homes, et cetera, listening versus not listening and all that. Yeah, and that's where we have to give the Apple team a lot of credit, right? If you look at how they're architecting, um, you know, how they're going to find things or in their architecture for how uh, they may be, sh uh, you know, showing if, if somebody that had uh, that virus cross paths uh, with you or not, right? They're really looking for ways of, you know, how do you have your cake and eat it too, right? So how do you have... The, the power of technology to help you um, in, in certain regards by finding things or making sure that you're not getting sick while at the same time preserving your, your privacy. And so I think people are being a lot more thoughtful towards architecting um, uh, ways of, of uh, uh, essentially putting bumpers around what you're sharing with brands because I think um, even Facebook, right? You know, everybody's turning the corner to say, all right, we're not gonna have this unfettered access anymore uh, um, and you know, we need a lot more trust between us and our users as well. Otherwise, our users going to go elsewhere. Yeah. Um, what about the uh, the debate around is AI evil or not? Right. Which I think is a, a pretty funny debate in the idea of like technology being uh, evil or not. But uh, there's definitely people who would argue uh, artificial intelligence is the greatest risk to humanity. Uh, and then there's others who would argue it's, you know, the, the most beneficial thing that could possibly happen. I guess, how do you just think through that um, trade-off? And, and do you give any credence to the whole, you know, AI is evil or, or is a big threat to humanity? Right. So that's, that's like, um, you know, trying to um, um, project morality to a hammer, right? If you put a hammer in Ted Bundy's hand versus Jimmy Carter's, you're going to have two different outcomes, right? Jimmy, uh, Ted Bundy's going to harm somebody and Jimmy Carter's going to build you a habitat for humanity. So it really is, um, I, I would not be looking at a, a form of technology and automatically assuming it's, it's positive or negative. I mean, it, it has... Uh, no such spin, if you will, right? It's it's really what are you going to do um, uh, with it, right? How are you going to uh, apply it? In some cases, it's it's going to affect your privacy. In other cases, it's going to help you hunt down vaccines. So it really depends on how you use um, uh, the tool. Yeah, and do you think there's things that we can do to uh, maybe not prevent, but at least uh, disincentivize? Uh, the negative use cases, right? Kind of to your point of if the technology falls in the wrong people's hands or is applied in the wrong way, are there things that can be done um, to, to try to uh, shepherd us away from that? Or is it just like other technologies where, um, you know, bad people are going to do bad things and good people are going to do good things? Yeah, I think it or organically it meets its end, if you will, right? Where the majority of people are going to be using it for positive means because the community in the market was would essentially... Um, um, not reward <laughs> negative uses of this technology. Now it doesn't happen overnight, but certainly there's there's no reward for it in the long term. Yeah, and and we're talking, I think, uh, the applications of artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, voice recognition, et cetera, in what I'll call kind of uh, the current state and the, to the short to medium term. I think one of the long-term implications that people are, are paying attention to or long-term applications uh, is things like Neuralink, et cetera, where actually mm -hmm. you start to merge the computational power with the human uh, body. And so there's applications that have been discussed of literally taking it, putting it in your brain, uh, all the way to some people would argue, you know, something like an Apple Watch is starting to get closer and closer air pods, et cetera. How do you just think about um, kind of the, the meeting of those two things uh, with such powerful technology augmenting humans in some way? Yeah, uh, that's an interesting one. Look, we're, we're worried about disinformation in our news feeds, right? In, in Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. So once the machines are blended into our minds, are we actually the ones voting for the people that we're voting for? Or is there some undue influence that's being applied towards, you know, um, you know, parts of our mind? It's going to be an interesting um, uh, debate, you know, to see where we end and, and where they begin. And then how do we ensure that it's our, our influence uh, that's creating these decisions and it's not some sort of external influence? That's a tough one. I mean, it's hard enough for us to 
um, um, uh, eat information responsibly now when it's separate from us. And, and so that's, uh, those are new issues that uh, future uh, generations are going to have to confront. Yeah, and, and I guess it really begs the question of like, wh where is the opportunity for something to go wrong, right? Because there's what data are you collecting, then how are you actually categorizing the data? How are you analyzing the data? And then like, what's kind of the, the output of that entire process? And, you know, there's a lot of people who, frankly, it scares the shit out of them if uh, Google and Amazon and, you know, those companies are the ones doing that stuff uh, and kind of feeding them the information or doing the analysis. Uh, and there's a lot of people who say, wait a minute, they're the smartest ones, you know, kind of on a, on a holistic basis. And so we'd much rather have them do it rather than, uh, you know, Joe Blow in his basement who uh, is kind of untrusted, unchecked, and, and can kind of do whatever he wants without any transparency. Yeah, that's the paradox, right? I mean, it's sort of like a comic book character, right? Be a hero long enough and you become a villain, right? So um, we all remember um, the nascent stages of the of the Googles and the Amazons and the Facebooks and everything else where they were consider, considered heroic for helping, you know, communities reach each other, right? Users, you know, far flung throughout the globe to be able to communicate with one another to find any sort of information. And now, you know, we have this new situation where uh, they're, they're viewed as the villains because they're so dominant, uh, successful, and they employ so many folks and they have undue influence on political processes and, and, the, and the like. So um, you'll have new upstarts, but you'll also have the incumbents uh, being part of that. Yeah, for sure. And, and I guess the, the big question most people have is just like, how did these technologies impact my life? And, you know, it, it's amazing that the uh, Alexas, the Google Homes um, have all, even Siri, uh, have kind of infiltrated in a very consumer friendly way because uh, people realize, hey, look, this is super helpful. It does provide me um, solutions. But then I always joke and say, and then they see like a Boston Dynamics uh, robot running through the forest and they're like, holy shit, the, you know, the robot's going to kill us all. And, and so it's really funny how um, I think people's uh, perspective is driven by uh, the use cases that they have and also what they see um, information online uh, drives kind of how, how their interest level is with the technology. And in, in some ways, um, it's, it's scattershot. And, um, you know, for every positive use of technology, you'll read a negative one and, and positive one and negative one. And, and uh, you're going back and forth like a yo-yo on is this good for us or, or bad. In some ways, you know, we can't predict all the good that's going to happen and it's going to be surprising. And we can't predict all the bad that's going to happen and it will surprise us as well. Um, certainly nobody, you know, coming outside of New Year's Day expected, um, you know, everything to turn out the way that it did in the first half of of this year and and hopefully we have pleasant surprises in front of us just not unpleasant surprises too